So I will give you some examples and, and let's see if you can figure it out, right? So for example, if I were to give you y is equal to x squared minus 3, like that, okay? We're going to talk about width and opening. Okay, so I'm going to give you a bunch of equations and you're going to tell me this and this and why. Okay, so just a note. In this case, there's only an x squared term and a constant at the back. Okay, there's no x term and that's fine. It's still a quadratic. We know that in front of the x squared term, that's our leading coefficient. So a in this case is equal to 1, positive 1. Okay. So in terms of the width, we know that this will just be a normal parabola, right? It won't be wide or narrow, it'll just be what we call normal. And opening, it will open up, right? Because A is positive. Why is it normal? A is equal to 1. So that's my explanation here as to why that is, okay? If I give you another one, f of x is equal to negative 2x squared plus 3x, let's say. Okay. Um, it's, there's still an x squared term, so it makes us a quadratic. In this case, it has a leading coefficient of negative 2. Okay, so a in this case is negative 2. All right. So, in terms of the width, what would this be? Don't look at the sign, just look at the value itself. 2. If you go back, anything, if A is bigger than 1, then it would be considered a narrow curve. Okay? So, this would be narrow. A is bigger than 1. And it would point down because A is negative, okay? That's just how it goes. Uh, let, maybe let's do one more. F of X is 1 fourth X squared plus 3X minus 7. Notice that this quadratic equation in this form has an a component, a coefficient a, which is the leading, that's the most important one. It has a b value because whatever is in front of x is what we call b, and it has a c value, right? Because if you recall, in general, it's ax squared plus bx plus c. In this case, c would be negative 7, okay? So we would say in this case, this is A is one quarter like that, right? We could also write it down as a decimal like that. So for in this case, it would be considered a wide curve, okay? Wide because A is in between 0 and 1, right? 0 0.25. And we would be pointing up because A is positive. Okay, so here you have a bunch of examples and scenarios as to what can you expect without even graphing it. Um, you just have a bunch of examples that you can go by because that at first it's a little confusing, right? Like where what does this mean, right? And so we're gonna just keep that in mind. Oops, sorry. All right, uh, we'll continue. I'm just going to have my notes closer to me here. All right, so three, we're going to talk about the vertex. Somebody joined, I'll get your attendance later. Um, will I fit it in here? Yes, I will. the vertex.
Okay. What is the coordinate? in the form x, y where the parabola changes direction. We sometimes call, also refer to as as the peak or the valley. Depending on its opening, It will be referred to as min or max. When using the calculator. So when it's uh, when when the the parabola opens down, right? If it's like this, then the vertex. If you think of it as coming from the left, right? You you rise, you increase until a point when you reach the maximum here, the highest point, and then you the, the parabola changes directions the other way. So that in this in this case this would be referred to as our max. And if it's pointing up like this, it would be referred to as our min, right? Because it, it drops, it drops, it decreases, and then it changes direction. So that would be considered our min. But in both cases, this is still considered the vertex. Okay. We call it the vertex, but when we're using our calculator, if it's pointing this way, you have to use the max function. Does that ring a bell? Calculator? I'm just going to show you second trace. Remember, min and max, we haven't used those yet. And it, we're going to start using it soon. Okay. So vertex is, are these two points. Um, so I'm just going to make a note. So it doesn't matter if it's if it's on a parabola it's pointing up or down that point where it changes direction is called the vertex okay always that we refer to as as the vertex so use right second trace min or max Right. When we use our calculator, we're going to have to use second trace min or max. It's going to be one or the other to get the vertex. So I'm going to show you later on how to do that. All right. Who joined after the attendance? Uh, can you tell me? Anybody know? I'll figure it out later. What I'm going to do now is save attendance. And I'm going to 
let's save it under here. I'm gonna figure it out later. I wanna keep keep with my notes here. Okay, back side for me, just continue. Four, it's the axis of symmetry. So the axis of symmetry cuts the parabola into symmetrical parts. It is always a vertical line. The equation of the axis of symmetry is x is equal to the x value of vertex. So if I ever ask you to come up with the equation of the axis of symmetry, it'll be x is equal to, it'll be the x value of the vertex, okay? So if you have did I do that example? Yeah, I'll do it. So let's say you have a parabola here at 2, 3. Basically what, how I draw my parabola is I start with a vertex and then I go out with one arm this way and then I go out with the other arm that way. But it should not look like a V, okay? Don't make it a V, it should be like a nice smooth transition over the uh, vertex, right? So if this is your vertex here and I label it two, three, and it's just a sketch, okay? Then the axis of symmetry, right? The axiometry would be x is equal to, in this case, the x value of the vertex is 2. Okay, so that is the, uh, this is the equation of the axis of symmetry. It's an equation. And think about it, x is equal to a number is a vertical, results in a vertical line. Okay. So this, this equation, if you were to graph it, it would cut this parabola right through the vertex in two equal parts, okay? So this is the line x equal to, it's not a point, it's an equation, okay? Okay, it's not a point, it's an equation. Okay, all right, let's keep going.
if it opens up, obviously it has a minimum. And if it opens down, it has a maximum. The equation of the min max is y is equal to y of vertex. It's also an equation, right? So using the example above, right? Using graph above, y is equal to, first of all, this would be in this case, it would be a max, right? Y is equal to 3. So my would be the equation of the max. So there's the axis of symmetry, which is an equation, and then there's the min or max, the equation of the minimum and the max, which is y equals. So the vertex, the coordinates of the vertex give you both of these pieces, okay? Number six x-intercepts. So there's something new here that the a parabola can have zero, one, or two x-intercepts. Okay. And I'll give you the scenarios. Zero x-intercepts. One x intercept, two x intercepts. So in the, there are basically two main cases when you have no x-intercepts. And the graph would look something like this. Okay. And I'll make a, a big, I'll mark the vertex clearly like that. So these are the two instances where you have no x-intercepts. It never crosses, right? Never crosses the x-axis. And then you have another one where, right? If the vertex is right on there, okay? You can have, you will have exactly one x-intercept. And you could have 
number of scenarios like that. Okay, so both of these, it doesn't matter if it's pointing up or down, the vertex is right on the x-axis. Okay, so in, in these instances, th those are the ones we refer to as one x-intercept. And then you have two x-intercepts, intercepts, right? So that's when you have something like this. Okay, it's crossing it twice there. And you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to change it to I will I will use the for my vertex I'll use black or a different color so the vertex is always kind of my, like one reference point and then you have your x intercepts as well okay so how would you explain that right when does this happen right so no intercepts that happens when the vertex vertex is above x-axis and a is positive that's that's one occurrence right if the vertex is above the x-axis and a is positive then it's never going to meet right you can tell right away that it's not going to happen and another instance would be vertex is below x-axis, right? And A is negative. So there is that. Exactly one x-intercept would be vertex is on the x-axis and I'll put in brackets a can a and little quotation can be positive or negative it doesn't matter okay. the value of a in this case does not matter and the last one would be the first instance would be vertex below x-axis and a is positive okay and my second instance would be vertex is above x-axis and a is negative okay. so go ahead and write that down 